Let's take a look at a really cool example of applying the monotone convergence theorem. The example we'll look at is from the textbook Real Analysis by Jay Cummings. Quickly, recall that the monotone convergence theorem tells us that a monotone sequence converges if and only if it is bounded. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson proving this theorem in a lot of detail. In that proof, we address specifically what a monotone bounded sequence converges to. We don't just prove that it converges, so check that out if you haven't seen it. We have proven that a lot of sequences converge, but in order to use the definition of the limit of a sequence to prove convergence, we need to know what the limit of the sequence is. So when we suspect that a sequence AN converges, we suspect that it has a limit, say L, and then we show that the distance between terms of AN and L gets smaller and smaller. But we need to have an idea what that limit might be in order to actually prove it. One of the powerful things about the monotone convergence theorem is it gives us a way to prove that a sequence converges without even knowing the limit. If a sequence is monotone, and bounded, then it converges. At no point do we need to identify the limit. So check this out. Consider this weird sequence defined like this. A1 equals 0.1. A2 equals 0.12. A3 equals 0.123. And this pattern continues, appending the digits of the position to each subsequent term in the sequence. So for example, with a two digit position, a13, that's equal to 0 0.12345678910111213. So one way to think of this sequence is that each term an just consists of zero point and then the digits of all the numbers from one to n. It may also be helpful to think of this sequence recursively. So the first term A1 is 0.1, and then after that, each term is just the previous term, but with the digits of its position appended to the end. Like A13 is just the previous term A12, but with the digits of its position 1, 3 appended to the end. We may suspect that this sequence converges, but it's not at all obvious what it would converge to. So our previous strategy of just proving that it converges to a limit using the definition of the limit of a sequence, we have no way of doing that if we don't know what the limit is. But maybe we can use the monotone convergence theorem to prove that this interesting sequence converges even though we don't know its limit. First, we would need to show that it is in fact a monotone sequence. Is it? Is it increasing or decreasing? Well, consider a term from this sequence, a n plus one, and the previous term a n. Remember that a n plus one is just a n, but with the digits of its position appended to the end. So a n plus one minus a n is equal to zero point a bunch of zeros and then some stuff. All the zeros are from the digits that a n plus one and a n had in common, and then the stuff at the end is just the digits of n plus one. In other words, the important part here is that a n plus one minus a n is always greater than zero. And so indeed, this sequence is increasing. Each term a n plus one is greater than the previous term a n. Remember that for a sequence to be monotone increasing, it just needs to be the case that each term is greater than or equal to the previous term. Here we've got something even stronger than that, that each term is strictly greater than the previous term. So certainly this is a monotone sequence. Thus, by the monotone convergence theorem, if it's bounded, then it converges. So we know our sequence is monotone, but is it bounded? 
Well, certainly it is, because each term a n from this sequence begins with 0.1. In other words, every term is certainly less than the whole number 1. So again, since each term of the sequence begins with 0 whole units and 1 tenth, certainly each term of the sequence is less than 1. So, by definition, the sequence is bounded. In particular, this shows that the sequence is bounded above, but obviously any increasing sequence is bounded below by its first term, or more simply, for this sequence, it's bounded below by zero. So isn't that cool? Since our weird sequence is monotone and bounded, as we just demonstrated, by the monotone convergence theorem, our sequence converges. Two.